welcome to the Happy Ramp Podcast. I am Ted Cluck, joined, as always, in studio by my good friends, my partners in radio, Barnabas Piper and Ronald J. Martin. And boys, unlike last week, we have we have content. We have uh, we have show prep that happened. We have topics to get into, pressing topics. Not the we not the least of which, you guys, was the fact that yesterday, so we're taping this on a on a Wednesday morning. Um, Yesterday evening, there was a huge, huge event um, that got everybody talking, everybody on Twitter, and it, it involved two kind of aging, you know, media giants, and uh, and it and it basically broke Twitter. And um, I'm talking, of course, of the big announcement that Ronald J. Martin and Jared C. Wilson are going to be starting their own podcast. I feel like this broke the internet last night, and it kind of it kind of trumped if you will, any other big media event that took place. So nice choice of um, there too. Do you think we could yeah. call them like would you just call them two average Joes? Just a couple of normal pastors. You know, yeah. just a couple of average lunch pail Joes. Um baby, tell us about the new program. Uh tell us where we can see it and hear it. Actually it'd be hearing it. Um <laughs> I have been podcasting for eight years. So well, I don't um, know. Maybe they're cutting edge. Maybe they're including a video component with this. I oh. can see them including video. Is this going to be a video deal? Can thing? you imagine just Jared staring at his closet full of short sleeve button downs, <laughs> wondering which one to sport for oh today's episode? Oh my gosh, episode? dude. Yeah, the wardrobe alone would be hours every day. Hours down the drain. Yeah, and it is, boys. I mean, we've done some sample apps, and, the, and it is. It's, we've been late every time because Jared sees changing. So. Oh, well. Wardrobe, makeup, you know, you it's know. a lot. Absolutely. But baby, that's the entertainment business, you know, and that's the it business is. you're in now because you guys... It's not um, show friends. Yeah, it's you've big. hitched your wagon with a big media conglomerate, baby. And I know we had to be coy about this because these things take time uh, to work out. And now you're in the, the Christianity Today family of podcasts. So, like, have you done Hangouts? Do you feel like like you're doing dinners at, like, Mark Galley's house? Or is that his yeah, name? Mark Galley, the CT. Yeah, I've, just, I've been on a plane, like, every day. I mean, well, I, I haven't, yeah, I think, I've been home. I think Galley retired and weeks. announced he was Catholic now, though. So, uh, I don't Dude, know did he go Catholic? Though. Yeah, he did. That's a... Wow, wow, wow. That's, that's fascinating. I feel like it's... Sorry to derail the big announcement. My bad. No, that's no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm so happy we derailed the the Catholic. Baby, we're stepping on your moment by Mark Galley going Catholic. I feel like that's a thing that like college sophomores do, not necessarily like 60 year old guys. But interesting. We may have to we may have to do devote some minutes to that at some point. But uh, but at any rate, far be it for me to uh, to step on Ron's moment. How how are you feeling, babe? How's the uh, how's the the level of excitement like around the house? Are you walking a little taller? Melissa looking at you a little differently? What's what's the feeling? Oh, baby, it's, uh, you know, I mean, it's it just it's one of those moments where it feels like everything in life has finally come together. You know, well, I know, the, dude, all, all the hard that work, all, the all that time you put in with Jared, dude, you've been building toward this and now it's, it's going to pay off. I mean, there it is right there. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. And and how is this going to affect your uh your diehard commitment to this show, you know? Yeah. When, you know, yeah, just that rock solid weekly commitment that we've gotten from you. It is. I mean, boys, there's no fear here. I mean, I, I know where, uh, I know who's signing my checks right now and it's, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, it's still this program. And it's Jared so. or Jared's wife. Right. So <laughs> they have, they have a joint bank account. Everything's really above board in that family. I mean, boys, I, if I want to, at least they don't have I'm joint gonna, Facebook I'm still, accounts. I'm still doing the happy rant. So that's, that's what we're Pipe. At. Piper, over under a number of months until Ron leaves the happy rant to to be devoted exclusively to Jared. How many times did I quit this week, Pipe? Uh, this week it's been low, but we also haven't texted too much this week. I mean, usually it's like a weekly it's like a weekly resignation. So you're sort of yeah, the, you're like the boy who cried I quit at this point. Um Dude, does Ron do like I'm quitting text to you, Pipe? Because I don't get those. You know, it's just kind of him being generally fed up with the world and everything and so this show is probably the easiest thing to quit and then he quits and then he comes back on or he goes on a retreat and revives himself i'm not sure there it is uh you know six months revive our hearts that's the retreat i i think we have a setup that allows ron to not quit this program because frankly we just don't ask that much of him so that's true and also there are business deals in the works that he it you know if he backed out now, yeah. he's losing a know big fat paycheck potentially. All those deals that they all evaporate. So, um, so yeah. I mean, while you're enjoying all yeah. that, all, 
boys, like I said, I mean, I, I know where the, I know what side of the, I know what side of the toast the, uh, the the butter is spread. So it's all good, you know. Baby, remember who got you started in this business when you're when you're getting your head turned by all those CT dollars, oh, all absolutely. those dinners with Cosby. Big T, um, I'm gonna say yeah. Big T. That's who that's who got me started in this business. That's it, baby. That's it. Big this T. lucrative business that we're all in. And I mean, I walk into those meetings with a T-shirt that says Big T, like call him. <laughs> that's right, because you love your you love your theme T-shirts. Don't tweet um, him, but you can text yeah, him, and then I put right. your number. Right, right. Call him, maybe. Um, Piper, speaking of lucrative business deals, we have several in the works. Uh, we don't have time to talk about all of them, but uh, tell us about our sponsor for today. Our sponsor for today is Dwell Bible App, our audio Bible app friends. Uh, we, they've, they've done a lot with us so far. Um, so new listeners, Dwell is an audio Bible app that has, so, um, it's not just sort of a standard listen through the Bible. They offer all sorts of different features, plans, readers, music, and, uh, and other options so that you can engage scripture in a way that you couldn't previously fit it into your commute, fit it into your dishwashing, you're going for a run, you're hitting of the elliptical, you're trying to ignore your children, whatever it is, um, and make it work to your liking. If you go to dwellapp.io slash happy rant, they have a, a special setup for our listeners to get a 20% discount. It comes out to just under $2 a month. So very affordable. Um, again, dwellapp.io slash happy rant, uh, and you can get that 20% discount. Then our other sponsor for today is us. We are sponsoring us guys. Um, well, technically we're not technically we're asking the listeners to be our sponsor because we're, uh, we're doing something new. We've had a Patreon page for uh, probably a year and a half or two years. And a lot of our listeners have been super generous with really fairly minimal benefit to them other than just the the goodness of their hearts at knowing that they're paying our bills. Um, but we are going to start putting out bonus episodes for our Patreon supporters posted to that page or through that page. So if you go to patreon.com and just search Happy Rant, you can find our page. There's multiple different tiers you can support us. Some of them you even get free books, like my brand new one, uh, Hoping for Happiness. I'll sign it uh, and send that to you. And then you'll be able to find these bonus episodes there. And those will only be available for Patreon supporters. Um, This is a big step for us because we don't like to do additional work, but you have earned the right for us to do additional work by supporting us. So go to Patreon, search Happy Rant, uh, support us at any dollars per month, and you can get those episodes. If you hit one of those tiers, you'll get free books and so forth. And then whenever we can do live events, the Patreon supporters get discounts and the like as well. They're kind of the first to know about those things. So we do we do try to throw a bone to those people who are generous to us also. Excellent. Good work, Pipe. That's a that's an exciting new business endeavor for the program. And, yeah. Uh, you, do you think we're up for it, doing more podcasting? I don't know, man. I, I mean, <laughs> well, I you just, know, we, we just gotta, promised it, so we better be. We got a lot of schedules to juggle now. You know, we'll have to call CT, get get Cosby on the speed dial, and we'll see I, if he can I know relinquish I'm, Ronald to us for a little while. I'm feeling a little bit left out because both of you guys are now hosting two podcasts, and I'm only currently at one. I used to be at two. Um, but I'm not anymore. So maybe I need to go get like a podcast side piece. Uh, I just and- don't know. I mean, <laughs> is one enough? You know, is one pod enough? Piper, it's do you, not do enough you often anybody. like kind of sit and look at the glamour of our lifestyles compared to your own and go, if I only had a second less successful podcast, it would, it would kind of make, it would make all the difference. I mean, is that a, is, is that a thought? That's that you a have real often? thing. That's a real yeah, thing. Big that is. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it really is. I look at. And then I text you guys and I'm like, hey, when are we going to record? And then we're all like, well, we're never free. And I'm like, man, this sounds amazing. I would love to be as busy yeah. as that, that, that I'm never free to record. So mm. it, it, yeah, it's an itch that might need to be scratched. I know it, man. I know it. Well, we can, uh, you know, we can, we can look around out there and find you the we'll perfect. We'll tease something up for you. Yeah, we'll tease something worry. for you. We'll come up yeah, with we'll something. something up for you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Boys, the other, the other kind of big bit of media news last night, in addition to Ron and Jared's announcement, um, was that there was a presidential debate. Um, I did not watch it. Shocker. Uh, (laughs) But apparently, but apparently people are freaking out over it. And there's been a big freak out 
Uh, apparently, people were surprised that these two candidates were the way they were, and uh, or they were just reminded of it afresh last night. Uh, what do we want to say about the presidential debate freakout? First of all, did did either of you watch it? Uh, I did not watch it. No. Um, mm-hmm. Unlike the rest of America, it seems I feel like I had a pretty good handle on mm-hmm. who these candidates were and how this would go down. And then as I watched people freak out, it confirmed that my intuition was correct. So I feel to pretty quote just- Jenny Green. They oh. are who we thought they were. Yeah. And uh, they are who they've proven themselves to be for the last, you know, 12 years in our lives for one of the candidates and four for the other. So, uh, yeah, it's it, it didn't seem overly surprising to me, although it really seemed to catch a lot of people off guard. Ronnie, do you watch it? Uh, no. Any minutes of it? No, but I felt like I felt like that night as I was last night as I was going to bed and I and I looked at Twitter, I felt like, oh, I just feel like I I watched it like four times in a row. Going off of everybody's comments. Yeah. I feel like this topic is a little bit, it's a little bit dangerous for us because we, we very studiously avoid politics on this program, um, which, which tip of the cap to us has been hard to do in the last like two or three years. And that literally every single decision in American life is tinged and tainted by politics. Um, so I feel like we've done really well to, to keep it out of the program, but we're, we're tiptoeing very close to it now. How- I don't know, man, because I because I think T. I mean, so what's funny about that, man, is um, mm-hmm. there was. Um, well, go ahead. What were you going to say? What were you going to say? No, no, no. I want to. I want to hear. No, no. You. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I want to hear you. Actually, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember what I was going to say. Truly. <laughs> come on. So go come for on. It. Give me something. Uh, just that I feel like politics is tainted. Literally every single thing including things that were never fun, things that used to be fun, decisions that didn't used to be public or matter all that much, like politics has ruined all of it. And I wonder if I wonder if we're ever going to like pivot or swing the pendulum the other way to to that being not the case anymore or if we're just trapped in this uh kind of cycle forever. I mean, I think yeah, depending on who the dude is in the in the in the house, you know, I, that probably has something to do with it. What's funny about last night is that really it has. This is what I thought was interesting. It it doesn't yeah. have a lot to do with politics at all, but it was all to do with personality in in a mm-hmm. way. And yeah. it was um, it was really interesting to see there was and, and Pipe. I want to hear what you think about this because you um, you were on social, but like there was this just this unified like gasp over the whole thing. So, I mean, <laughs> what seriously, man, like whatever side you're on politically, I mean, all everyone was saying was like this is a gong show. I mean, yeah. that that's all anybody could say. And again, I'm talking about people that are super on this side or super on that side, super in the middle, but I yeah. mean, it was like all the I mean, across the board, it was like I can't believe what I'm looking. I just yeah. I can't get my head around the fact that smart people were caught off guard that this is how it was going to go. There's that too. I mean, it, it, nothing. And again, we're going to try to avoid, you know, partisan politics here. So let's just keep this at the realm of like Americans interacting kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you've watched anything about how social media works in the last, you know, sort of it's, it's the, it's arc over the last five to eight years. Nobody has civil discourse. There's no rules of decorum. There's a, mm-hmm. th- including for politicians, maybe especially for politicians. It, mm-hmm. If you've watched how anything happens in the House or the Senate or the White House or wherever, same thing. Like there's just it's just you know, all bets are off. So the fact that it was a total S show was uh, <laughs> was utterly unsurprising. And yeah, and I yet people I- were like. This is not what I expect out of presidential candidates, really. At this point, like, who, at this right. point, you should expect. Did, did you do you think we were back in like 1954, and the only thing to fear is fear itself, or something? Like, I don't. Back, I, I'm back st- in 19, back in yeah, 1954, I, when adults acted like adults. That's crazy yeah, talk. And it just <laughs> back in 2004. <laughs> yeah. It, it it's uh I think I think that's the part that gets me is the. Is like the the pearl clutching hand wringing over what seems to me 
to be the most predictable outcome of putting the any two presidential candidates on a stage in the current state of American politics. So so answer me this, you guys. You're both on social. You can you can speak to this. So what's to be gained from watching 20 minutes of the debates, running to Twitter and tweeting out some version of this is a gong show. Oh my gosh, I don't believe it. Like, what does that do for a person? Because it, it creates a lot of anxiety and despair, which is yes, right, exactly what you saw on social. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. not a great take. Like, it's not the cleverest take in the world. Yeah, it's not uh, a brilliant take. It's not. It's not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, is I, there some sort of like collective uh, moment to be shared with that, or is it just like I've got to vent my spleen because I vent my bit- spleen about everything? You know, like when when celebrities pass away and everybody mm-hmm. publicly mourns. We've talked about that on here, and there's yeah. sort of a there's sort of an oddity to it because you find out that everybody was you know a Prince fan or something, and you're like, oh, I didn't know that. You've never talked about him before or shared any of his music. It's there's a sense of like we have to get in on we have to get in on this thing. Like this is the thing everybody's talking about. So so we have to mm-hmm. you know we have to comment on it. We have to share on it. Whatever. And I, th- I think that's it. And I also think people yeah. just don't, they can't take a, a moment to go, I'm pretty sure I know how this is going to turn out. I'm not likely to learn anything. I'm probably yeah. just going to make myself anxious and depressed at the state of America's leadership. So you know what I'm going to do? Go to the grocery store, uh, grab a bite to eat, and you know watch The West Wing or something. And imagine how much happier- Watch a, a fake show about politics. Yeah, a show about like, a president who doesn't treat people badly and scream and interrupt and you know that kind of thing. I don't know. It it just seems Yeah, I don't it it's really strange to me the compulsion that people have to jump in on. Like you you would have had to pay me significant money to spend any time watching that debate or any presidential debate in the current the current state of things. Yeah, I just wonder if uh, that's a good point, Pipe. I I just I wonder if it's almost like there's a there's a part of people when it comes to like the nation's leaders where they they still want to hope. So you you turn on a you turn on a, a debate like that and you have this sense that it's going to be gongy. But at the same time there's something in you that is just hoping you're going to get something that you've never gotten before that at least brings you back to a moment or a time when things felt a little more stable and a little more normal. And of course, you're disappointed, but it's, it's almost like an abusive relationship where you go back to it, you go back to it hoping something's going to be different, but it's never any different. And then you have to, but, and then you have to act surprised at like, okay, I knew it was bad, but I had no idea it was this bad, right? Dude, so can I lean into that for a sec from like a, like a pastoral standpoint? Yeah. And I want, you, I want you to speak into this because let's say, for example, you have someone you know well who has absolutely zero hope for any of it. Yet as Christians, we're, we are called to be hopeful. Um, you know, we're supposed to pray for our leaders. We're, you know, overall our posture because of Christ should be one of hopefulness. Yet there's this huge sphere of our lives where maybe this person feels like it's impossible to have any hope. Like what would you say to that person. Also, that person is me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> full disclosure. Um, and and I, I really do struggle with that. Like anytime I think about it, talk about it, whatever, I'm just filled with existential dread and despair. But how do I balance that with like the hope that I'm supposed to have? Well, I mean, yeah, I feel like the two extremes that you see, and maybe this will help, but I, I feel yeah. like the two extremes that you see are just the Christian's that are, I mean, they just are in total and utter despair. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And so there's this overemphasis on what they're seeing, how they're feeling. Um, And it's, they they know, I think they know intellectually that, you know, this doesn't encompass our hope, you know, politics, leaders, however bad, you know? Yeah. And then I think that there's this other side of it where you see the people just say, Jesus is Lord. Like, we don't have to worry about any of this everything's mm-hmm. cool, almost yeah. like a sense of like, just um, like willful 
ignorance, yeah. you know, yeah. in a sense saying, hey, you know, again, we're, this is, this is, you know, we're not part of this kingdom. This is all going to mm-hmm. pass. Someday God's going to judge everything. So we can just kind of blissfully stay, you know, kind of moving forward and slightly unaware. And I yeah. think that there has, there has to be like a medium, a middle ground with that, right? Like, so like biblically, mm-hmm. you, you just see a middle ground, right? You, you see, you see like there should be a sense of like grieving for something that you hope with our leaders is going to be a little closer to the kind of like respect, integrity, morality that aligns with, with Christ. And then at the same time, you also do want to have a sense of like, but when it's not, man, I have to shift my hope and my gaze back to Christ. But what, like, I think that's just really hard. I think that's a fight and a struggle. I mean, I don't really, I'm not in the mood for that fight and that struggle, but I, we have to push in. We really have to do, we have to do some hard work in leaning into that, that tension, I think. Because that, it's an uncomfortable tension, but we, but that's literally where we're living if we want to live, you know, as unto Christ through these things, right? I don't. I, I think that I think that we've, I think that we've been trained badly by both on on two on two ends. One on what does it actually mean for Christ to be the King and for His kingdom to be the thing that we are mm-hmm. invested in? I think mm-hmm. we. America has has made it so easy for us to just mosey through life for our entirety that we've never had to think about that. What is this mm. other reality that Christ is bringing? Yeah. And so we we don't understand and we don't think about it. And then the other thing we've been badly trained in is we've just we expect America to be to be wonderful. And by we I mean uh, at least <laughs> at least white people. Uh, and we just sort of expect it to be like everything's supposed to be great. We're supposed to be the best nation in the world. We like that's what we've been, and it seems like maybe that won't perpetually be the case. We're not always yeah. going to be the best run kind of perfect nation, so to speak, <clears throat> and we're not used to that. And so the signs that it's coming apart at the seams, at least a little bit, it's fraying, it's worn, it's not the quality that it used to be in in many ways. Uh, freak people out. And those two go hand in hand because if you don't have, if, if you're out of touch with the expectations on both of those sides, it means you don't have any idea where to put your hope. Whereas if you have this keener sense of no matter what goes on around me, there's this reality called Christ's kingdom. And it's just as true in a, in a country run by a you know despotic terror monger as it is here. Um, and... And then on the other hand, to say, well, I, as much as I enjoy the benefits of a great country, my hope can't be, it can't be any percent in that. I just get to, I just get to reap the rewards of that and, you know, hopefully steward them well. And none of this is saying we shouldn't engage in politics. Like I think engaging in politics and, and civil, civil engagement is good, but always within limits. Like we do that for the good of people, not for the sake of, you know, eternal hope. And and it it really does seem that people have are have they've completely lost perspective on where does peace and hope come from? Because we have gained so much comfort from a country that is peaceable for so long. And now that it is less so, we don't know what to do. Good word, Pun. Mm. So who are you guys voting for in November? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just. I'm just joking. Uh, we don't have to talk about that. Ronnie, I think Ronnie Pike's voting Jared for Trump. That's pretty. Yeah, Ronnie and Jared, dude. Who would be the president and who would be the v, the VP oh, in, that, in that deal? Boy, that's rough. That's mm-hmm. rough to even think about that. We're getting it? down that's... to brass tacks now, boys. Yeah, all that other tees, stuff was man. just was just preamble. Absolutely. Dude, could we get a T-shirt though? Like a like one of those political looking like it's re- it's red and blue kind of like you know what I'm talking about? Like election like T-shirts. One, yeah, one says, name above the other. Yeah, yeah, we'll have yeah. that for the next. Uh, what would the presidential right? slogan be? Make America normal, normal again. Guys. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, no, it'll be it keep be? keep America normal. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Keep America normal can can do. Um, wow, that's uh, that's exciting to think about. Um, do you think Piper? Do you think if if uh, if Ronald? And uh, and Jared Rand, do you think Hillsong's social media guy would send personal anti-them <laughs> tweets from the Hillsong account like he like he's doing for Trump? 
Uh, uh, this is a thing that happened. Jared, apparently. Jared has no decorum, no respect for him from the Hillsong account. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so Piper, what happened here, man? I, uh, also, how how Christian? You got You got to fill me in on the background of this thing. Like scale one to ten, ten being the most Christian, one being like not at all. How how Christian is Hillsong anymore? I don't even know if they're like like where are they at on the spectrum? I mean, they're. They're pretty Christian in the sense of like, they're not <clears throat> they're not immoral, you know. They're they're not like, yeah. they, but they're they're not preaching like a hard a hard gospel of like turn from your sins and repent kind of thing. They're a little bit more right. sort of hopey happy. Um, okay. Which yeah. I guess having Sounds written like a book, book, I was going to say, having written a book called Hoping for yeah. Happiness, Judas, like, man. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's that's by Hill song, Hoping for Happiness. Run like, that hit like a little Barnabas. close though. Yeah, whoops. Get, yeah, that, uh, that maybe real maybe close. I maybe I can get uh, Brian Houston to promo the book. See, there's so much hope and happiness coming out of Piper right now. He just can't. Know, like, it's dude. just it's it's like flowing out like yep. mud with this kid. It's just, Doesn't it just emanate from him? I mean, yeah. when it, when I hear him talk about Trump, I just oh, I can I can hear the hopefulness. Like, yeah, it comes through the microphone. Yeah. Um, all right. Anyway, this guy, uh, this this guy's been sending personal anti Trump so, tweets from the uh, Hillsong account. It was one of those things, you know, where people manage multiple social accounts, and it seems fairly yeah. clear he forgot to switch over to his personal one, and so he was retweeting some different <laughs> insults of the candidates, particularly the one on the more right, uh, and then you know ma- put out some fairly pointed, you know, this guy is such a clown. I have no respect for him. Kinds of things, except it's coming mm-hmm. from the verified Hillsong account. Which is, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and guess that the majority of people in the Hillsong world would probably agree with the sentiments of those tweets. But uh, it was still very funny coming from a a church or at least Christian organization. I don't know if they call themselves a church or a denomination or network or what they are at this point. But uh, yeah, I mean, having done that before, not about politics, but having accidentally sent personal tweets from a, a corporate account before... It's a terrible feeling when you realize you've done it. Like you immediately just start drafting your resignation letter, even if it was innocuous. You're just like, I'm done. I'm out. Dude, I'm do a- you think this guy's gonna get canned over it? Uh, it's possible. Some of the stuff he retweeted was was fairly um w- was fairly aggressive. So it, I think it's very possible. Mm. Interesting. Wow, Ronald. <laughs> um. Thoughts is that prayers. dude gonna get fired? Is that dude gonna get fired? Um, yeah, I, man, that's I. I feel you know. I feel like to get fired for uh, tweeting the truth in an organization that would try to be as you know, kind of up the middle with those. T- I, man, that, that's a that's a hard one. You know what I mean? That's I, I, tweeting I, the truth. Are, are you saying he was tweeting the truth? Uh, I mean, it was it was you know it was it was more truthful than untruthful. Um, Dude, are you are you a hard anti-Trump guy, Ronald? I mean, you know, I, I'm I'm a hard, uh, you know, let's uh, have integrity, you know, in everything that we do, guy. So okay. take that as you will. Um, take but yeah, you know, I mean, I'm kind of ha- I'm I'm kind of a hard anti-politics guy. I don't do politics. Um, Dude, I know, so, baby, you and me never did politics before. But I mean, I have my opinion know? on the on the current administration, Ob the. Um, so, you know, it's just, you know, I don't, you know, I, I hate ugliness as the much as, as much as the next guy that hates ugliness. I mean, I hate anti-Christian rhetoric as much as the next Christian that should hate anti-Christian rhetoric. Um, so that's giving you a little vibe of where I'm at with some of that stuff. But, you know, ultimately, Actually, at the end it's of the not day, really, <laughs> frankly, okay. it's pretty, pretty neutral. <laughs> what do you mean, Piper? <laughs> I mean that uh, that that I'm very impressed with Ronnie's uh, tap dancing through the minefield right here, which I totally understand because as a man of the cloth, making bold statements about candidates is a a real risky thing to do. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't serve anybody well, and you know, so I, I mean, I, I have to love. I got you know, I got I got to love people on on both ends of the pole, right? And I do. Yeah. And um, but you know, I mean um. You know, it's we've cut. We're in a really unique place where, if somebody does something ridiculous and you say that's ridiculous and it offends people, and you look at them and you say, "So you don't think that's ridiculous?" I mean, you're then a bad guy. right? Then you're you're yeah. getting into this. You're getting into this baffling 
I, I can't believe where I'm at conversation with where we're at, which kind of goes back to your original point where like we're watching these dudes or that was your point pipe. We're watching these dudes and they're just doing what they do. You know what I mean? You know, Trump's going to Trump. Right. And like, and everybody's surprised or the ones that aren't surprised, you know, I guess are the ones that are still defensive. And, you know, it's just, it's like, you don't even know where to go with some of this stuff. It's all become so just a, a mushy, like murky mess. And Ted, it's you like made, a, you, like, made, you made the statement earlier that like everything has been politicized, you know? So things that used to be fun, things that used to be clear, things that used to be, and that's basically morals now. Like morals are yeah. attached to politics. So Absolutely. Ronnie's statement that I'm against ugliness or I'm against, you know, a lack of integrity shouldn't be a political statement. It should apply right. to politics as it applies mm-hmm. to pastoring, as it applies to parenting, as it applies to business, whatever. But it, but the moment you bring that into like the realm of voting, it's a, it's an incendiary statement instead of just being like, actually, I thought this was a standard that all Christians were supposed to have. Like, we should be opposed to lying, cheating, insulting, being abusive. You know, pick pick your list of accusations that have come out in recent years. Except, uh, except that in the realm of politics, that's a Ronnie just Ronnie just like threw down his hockey stick and pulled off his gloves and put his fists up. Well, I mean, it was it was a standard until it didn't have to be a standard. So if you can exist as a Christian in the world and adopt, you know, like worldly morals and principles and still exist within this construct, then, you know, I mean, that's the definition of like what, you know, Jesus and Paul were like warning us to be guarded against. Right. Right. So like, that's going to be our bent. Hey, can we, can we exist in this church context, but adopt, you know, what is most pleasing to our flesh? It's like, yeah, Mm. like, let's do that. Because that's going to be, in, that's there, there's an enjoyableness to that, right? And so, I, I mean, and that's what we're seeing right now. So it's so you talk about like what's not surprising in a sense, as much as it's as much as seeing where the church has gone in terms of what they are tolerating and what they are adopting now in terms of politics and presidential candidates. On one hand, you go, I can't believe it. On the other hand, but it goes, oh, but it makes so much sense, right? Because like. Any time that we can bend into the passions of our flesh and we have people and other Christians and other church organizations around us saying, rah, 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 you go, I'm with you. Like, are we not going to do that? You know? Dude, also both sides are doing it though, to be fair. I mean, oh, we, we sure. tend to like, we, we tend to like, you know, kick the, the, the right side of the aisle for that, but like truly both sides are doing it. Um, boys, wow. This one really went off the rails. Um, I was feeling, <laughs> or on. I was feeling, yeah, I was feeling up when I came into the studio and now I'm full of despair slash full of like a certainty that we're going to have to scuttle like two thirds of this episode. And, and what we go live with is going to be like nine minutes long. So what Let's you just be, said then is irrelevant. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, really all, every word all of we're it speaking is. right now is essentially just off the air. <laughs> if we want to keep any iota of our audience, then most of what we said today will be irrelevant. Um, uh, so I just, I bl- our audience is better than that, Big T. Come on. Audience, know, you're dude. better than that. They're great people, dude. I love our audience. So uh, shout out to our audience. Shout out to our sponsors, who I'm sure will be leaving after this ep drops. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have done what we always do on this episode, boys. And we're keeping it short because we have other business to attend to uh, in the studio here with each other. But uh, we have done what we always do. We've wandered to and fro throughout a couple of uh wildly incendiary topics and until next time the happy rant is brought to you by resonate recordings if you go to resonaterecordings.com you can see the full range of services they offer so if you're considering starting a podcast they are the ones we recommend going with again go to resonaterecordings.com to see their prices to connect with them and ask any questions and to see what they can do to help you launch edit master and improve your podcast Again, go to ResonateRecordings.com to see what they can do to help you launch and improve your podcast.